installment of Metalhead Central, the show where I take an honest look at the harder side of music and give it an honest rating. Today, we're going to be examining an album by an institution of the genre, and definitely the most famous metal band to ever come out of Brazil. I'm talking, of course, about Sepultura and their new album, Quadra. It was released February 7th on Nuclear Blast. So, how these mainstays do? Let's find out. So, an interesting thing about this album is its foundation. According to guitarist Andreas Kieser, this is a concept album based entirely around the number four and what they believe that it means. In keeping with this theme, they've split the album up into four separate parts based on four sounds that the band has had throughout its extensive history. In so doing, they've given each part its own distinct musicality and atmosphere. So, I'm going to be judging and grading each of the four parts as its own separate entity and then adding it all up to give it an overall grade as I normally do and having that speak to the overall cohesion of the four parts. So, the first three songs, or the first section here, reflect the band's thrashier side. It definitely shows. Isolation is a barn burner of a song that could feature on the best of today's thrash albums. Means to an End is intensely aggressive with a chorus that somehow manages to be both ticked off and catchy at the same time. It's a very narrow line and the band walks it rather well here. The third track, Last Time, slows things down a bit through the bridge section, but it's structured rather nicely, and it's the, really the first time that Kisser is allowed to shine on his own. A lot of good solos in that song. An interesting thing about this thrash laid inside that I noticed as I went through it is that it's definitely a modern and, and updated interpretation of the genre. You know, when I think of thrash, I think of Tom Araya, James Hetfield, and Joy Belladonna screeching in a rather high register while thunderous guitars churn away behind them. Sepultura play their thrash through the filter of a little bit of modern death metal, kind of, and Derek Green roars with aggression all through the three tr tracks. He sounds really, really great here. So in light of all of that, I'm giving the first part of the album a 23 out of 25. The second part of the album veers sharply away from thrash and is based more on the percussive and rhythmic elements of the band's home country. The glue that holds all this together is musicianship, which is heavily based on their Roots and Chaos AD albums. The riffs here are vicious, they just bite into your ears without mercy. The aggression is thorough and incredibly absolute, and it shows. Green is magnificent on vocals through this part, and it's almost impossible to distinguish him from Max Caballera from either of the aforementioned releases. Downside for this section is that the riffs are kind of similar to each other, and I'd like to hear a little more of a melodic twinge. So, in light of all that, I'm giving the second part a 22 out of 25. The third part is a bit more progressive, albeit without the ridiculous song lengths common in that genre. Still though, there's more musical breaks through this section. Where well, the first two were very aggressive and very straightforward and just pound, 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 this one opts for more of the typical dynamic shifts and they play around with that a lot. That being said, I've never been the biggest prog metal guy, except for Devin Townsend because he's a legend, and this part did really nothing to change my view. It's a little too jarring of a musical contrast coming out of both the thrash and percussive sections. It had its moments, definitely, but overall, just kind of blasé for me. I'm giving it an 18 out of 25. Finally, we have the more melodic section of the album. And as I listened to it, and I got further in, I realized something that just, as it grew on me, it started to make this section just great, and it ruined it. Misplaced melodies. It's not that they were non-existent, it's just that they were all in the wrong spots or improperly used. The choruses here try to be bombastic and epic, but come off as scratchy and crude. The beautiful backing choirs are completely obliterated by Derek Green, whose vocals have gone from fantastic to meh to downright unlistenable. His voice was perfect for the first two parts of this album, but having those death e growls over something that's supposed to be kind of moving, it just doesn't seem right. To me, I've heard excellent melodic metal. This wasn't it. I'm giving this section a 12 out of 25. <laughs> Add those scores together, and we get an overall score of 75 out of 100. This was an album that began with a tank load of promise, but the second half really kind of drags for longer than it should, and the final part was kind of an insult to melodic metal. If you want a great exhibition on thrash and percussion-oriented metal, listen to the first six tracks. If you want a great guide on how not to make prog or melodic metal, listen to the final six songs. This truly was a tale of two halves, and perhaps this should have been released as an EP of the first six songs only, or maybe a shorter full-length album. 
Thank you so much for watching. Click like, and don't forget to subscribe. Next time, we're going to be going through some deathcore as I examine Suicide Silence's new album, Become the Hunter. I hope you'll join me. You've been watching Metalhead Central, where I give honest ratings to honest music, and I'll see you all next time.